Hello, and thank you all for joining our webinar about Parasolid and Hoops Exchange. I'm John Rimmer from Siemens PLM Software. I'm speaking from our Cambridge UK office where I have marketing responsibilities for Parasolid, and I'm delighted to be your host for this event. We have a lot of attendees today, so we will be muting participants, but we encourage you to submit questions using the Q&A panel in your WebEx client. We'll try to get through as many of those as we can. There will be a Q&A session at the end, but do send any questions as they arise, as we may have opportunities to answer some of those as we move between speakers. Uh, please also note that we are recording this session to make it available online for those who weren't able to join us today. So we'll be hearing from Peter Kerwin, our Parasolid product manager. Peter will be talking about some of the latest advances in 3D modeling, including convergent modeling. We'll be getting the latest information on data access using Hoops Exchange from Jonathan Giroir, who is the technical marketing manager at Techsoft 3D. We're also very pleased to be joined by our mutual customer, DP Technology, and Ivan Kristic, who is the director of product engineering, will be telling us about their experience of integrating Hoops Exchange with Parasolid. Ivan is going to be first up, but before I pass this over to Ivan, I'll just spend a few minutes setting the scene with a short history about these two solutions for modeling and data exchange. Parasolid is developed and supported from Cambridge in the UK, where we have a rich history of software development in the field of geometric modeling. In fact, Parasolid is a culmination of coding and expertise that can be traced right back to 1974. And so here we are more than 40 years later, and Siemens remains fully committed to Parasolid. It's fundamental to our own PLM applications. And we license it to a great many software vendors outside of Siemens under our level playing field policy. And it's this large base of internal and external customers that has really helped us to drive the breadth of functionality and the quality and performance that Parasolid is renowned for today. It also means that the Parasolid XT data format, which we also publish under our open data policy, has become one of the most widely used formats for representing and sharing accurate 3D models. And you can see on this slide just how widely Parasolid is being used. This is just a sample of our customer base, uh, but you can see we have major logos across various domains, whether it's mechanical CAD, computer-aided manufacturing and engineering, or AEC. And Peter will be telling us more about how and why Parasolid is helping these customers to achieve their success. Techsoft 3D is a company which we are very proud to work with very closely. Founded just over 20 years ago, the company has grown steadily and profitably into an employee-owned organization with more than 100 experts serving their partners worldwide from offices in the USA, UK, France, and Japan. The company originally partnered with industry leaders of the day like Computer Vision and SDRC who relied on their Hoops Visualize graphics engine. These early customers were looking for help in other areas, including CAD data import export, which led Techsoft 3D to develop, acquire, and partner in order to assemble a broad portfolio of 3D development tools. These include Hoops Visualize and Communicator for 3D graphics, Hoops Publish for data publishing, and Hoops Exchange for data access. And you can see again that these solutions from Techsoft 3D also have a very broad footprint in the software vendor community with nearly 500 unique applications based on Techsoft 3D's toolkit products. But the focus today is on Hoops Exchange and Jonathan will be telling us why this is a leading solution for 3D data access. In particular, we'll learn about the tight integration of Hoops Exchange and Parasolid that gives mutual customers significant advantages like translation-free import of Parasolid in formats like NX, Solid Edge, and SolidWorks, as well as data repair capabilities for invalid import data. And this tight integration of Parasolid and Hoops Exchange is the fruit of a long and successful relationship with Techsoft 3D that goes back to the start of the millennium when Techsoft 3D integrated Parasolid with Hoops Visualize and became a reseller for Parasolid. In more recent years, Techsoft 3D integrated Hoops Exchange with Parasolid and we became a reseller for Hoops Exchange. So not only do we have a strong sales and marketing partnership, we also cooperate at a technical level. 
Hoops Exchange developers have worked closely with Parasolid support to produce a tight integration between the two products that enables some of the advantages I mentioned earlier. Companies already benefiting from the tight integration of Parasolid and Hoops Exchange can be seen on my final slide, and we're going to hear from one of them now. So, Ivan Kristic at DP Technology, I'm going to pass control over to you so that you can proceed uh, with your presentation. Thank you, Jonathan. Um, thank you for including DP Technology in your uh, presentation. Uh, so, first, a little bit about DP Technology. Uh, DP Technology was founded back in 1985, and today is a leading developer and supplier of, uh, of a CAM system for a full range of um, machine tool applications. Uh, we have uh, three, um, uh, 18 support and development uh, offices with uh, headquarters in Camarillo, California, and uh, six R&D centers uh, in the United States, Italy, Germany, uh, Russia, and France. Uh, DP Technology delivers uh, powerful solutions to drive automation in manufacturing, uh, an Industry 4.0 uh, smart manufacturing platform. Uh, as part of it, a powerful full-spectrum CAM system, ESPRI, uh, factory certified digital machine tool, GDML, um, which comes along with the world-class technical support and automation platform and engineering services. So as, um, as the SPRI CAM system, uh, what we do is uh, we do high-performance machining, but uh, as of recently, uh, and in this high-performance machining, this includes uh, 2 to 5 axis milling, 2 to 22 axis turning, 2 to 5 axis REDM, uh, high-speed simultaneous 3, 4, and 5 axis uh, toolpath, Swiss turn, mill turn and B-axis multitasking uh, machines. Uh, as, of, um, as of recently, uh, Esprit CAM system also does hybrid manufacturing, uh, which uh, consists of combining additive and subtractive processes and direct energy deposition and direct metal deposition machines. In addition, also the three, 3D printing and additive manufacturing. So part to build workflow, uh, quickly moving from CAD file to print to a printed part, uh, powder bed, binder jetting, and material jetting printers. So, uh, integrity of a CAD data input is critical uh, for 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 a CAM system in general. And uh, as pre customers, they use uh, a variety of CAD formats and combinations of uh, geometry types. So as a, um, uh, uh, just as a general format, DXF, DWG, IGES, VDA, ACES, Parasolid, STL, STEP, 3D PDF, JT, in, their, uh, in the native format, Inventor, Solid Edge, SolidWorks, Rhino, CATIA, Siemens, NX, uh, CREO. And uh, as far as the geometry types, it's pretty directly machines for many, for many of these combinations solid surfaces, wireframe, or STL, uh, and, and that provides us three with uh, complete manufacturing uh, flexibility. Uh, this means that a spree toolpath derived from models is only as good as the model itself. If the model quality is poor, it will affect the rest of the programming, potentially rendering uh, the resulting uh, code and uh, unusable. So. Uh, as we were uh, deploying or as we were evaluating a, a data exchange partner, it was very important uh, for us uh, that all these CAD formats and all the geometry types are supported correctly. So why we chose uh, uh, hoops? Uh, well, Esprit has been a parasolid uh, kernel-based uh, since 1998, uh, will be um, will be going on, tw on uh, next year, going on 20 years. 
And uh, the native parasolid kernel, kernel interoperability was, uh, was kind of an initial very uh, a selling point. And uh, having this uh, native parasolid kernel interoperability, uh, it was imperative for Esprit's machining feature recognition. Uh, also, the direct data access uh, that maintains parasolid data in, uh, integrity and uh, no risk of intermediate formats. And also, not all CAD files always come good, meaning that it was also important for us to have some kind of a data healing uh, and uh, having the par uh, a certain level of body shop integrated in hoops exchange was uh, uh, was a great feature for us. As far as hoops in Esprit, what we found, we took Esprit, uh, we took hoops and other vendors through rigorous testing, uh, and we found hoops to be to have high import quality across all these CAD formats, formats, to have a fast loading time. And what was extremely important to us to have a very low uh, memory usage. And again, this was done through hundreds of uh, testing files and uh, rigorous testing. Uh, also, in addition to being uh, to, to passing all these tests, what was also important to us is the technical support and the release schedule. Uh, so the technical support was highly considered uh, as, our, as our responsiveness to, to submitted issues or feature requests is reliant on the, on the 3D data exchange provider. And um, in addition, it is very important for us to be able to anticipate releases so that we could schedule development accordingly and ensure that we're supporting the latest CAD versions. Um, these were very important factors in our uh, technical support evaluation. And the uh, hoops came out on top here. So the, as far as the communication of submitted issues, uh, support portal usability, the bug, as well as the new feature turnaround time, uh, visibility and, com and commitment to schedule releases, and uh, as I said, response time to uh, new CAD releases. Uh, hooks came out on top, and there were other reasons why we uh, why we cho chose hoops uh, for S3. A sound API, uh, which was also very well documented, relatively small library size in compared to in comparison to some other uh, uh, libraries we evaluated. Support for 3D PDF, uh, PMI support, and uh, commitment to eventual support of native. Uh, CAD feature tree, uh, known in, um, in our Esprit world as, as the Esprit FX, stands for Feature Exchange. Um, let me just briefly tell you what uh, Feature Exchange is. Uh, so Feature Exchange is, uh, in addition to just the BRAP of the model, uh, we also translate um, uh, the feature tree from the CAD over to Esprit. So as a CAM programmer, uh, is uh, programming the toolpath uh, for this part. He or she also knows the, some true intentions of the, of the engineer, uh, how some particular features uh, were designed. As an example, uh, a tapped hole would be a good example, uh, as that would come across, not just as any hole, but in addition, uh, uh, pitch, uh, thread, and, and everything else would be known. Uh, this also helps us in uh, certain automation where we can automatically do feature recognition and put toolpath uh, without any uh, manual programming. So what was also very impressive is that the deployment of hoops was relatively short and in just a, a short c a couple of months we were able to integrate the uh, hoops and deploy in a sprint. So today, as 3 2017 R1 uh, uh, was is using Hoops since May of this year, and uh, we have another product, uh, Pre TNG, which st which stands for Esprit the Next Generation R3.1, since uh, June 9th. 
this uh, this is the uh, end of my presentation and again uh, thank you uh, Siemens PLM uh, and uh, Hoops Exchange Okay, thanks, Ivan, for a very informative uh, presentation. I'm, I'm just going, before we hand over to uh, Peter, I did uh, see a couple of questions. Um, well, firstly, uh, somebody, uh, somebody has asked if they're the only person attending. I should point out that as attendees, you won't see the full list of, uh, of other attendees. Um, I've also noticed that some, uh, some of our attendees are having problems with the audio connection. Um, I'm just going to send uh, a brief messages, a message out to those. It seems that they've been unable to, to connect with the uh, WebEx uh, audio. Um, now I'm going to uh, pass over to uh, Peter Cohen, our Parasolid product manager. Thank you, John. Um, I'm Peter Cohen. I'm product manager for the Parasolid range of products. And I'd just like to spend 10 minutes giving you a quick overview of Parasolid as a product and as a business. So Parasolid is a solid modeling kernel developed by Siemens and used as the corporate standard in all of our PLM products. So at the high end we have NX for CAD-CAM, Solid Edge in the mid-range for CAD-CAM, then a whole range of specialist applications, for instance for robotics and simulation. This means that Parasolid is used to design, test and manufacture a whole range of consumer and industrial products across all sectors. And in turn, that means that our functionality, performance and quality has been driven hard by the most demanding end users over many years. We also believe in continual investment in our internal processes because we've found from long experience that meticulous software engineering always proves to be worthwhile. The new unique thing about the Parasolid business is that Siemens also licenses Parasolid technology to third parties, um, to other PLM software developers, many of whom are direct competitors with our own products. And we do this simply because we believe that by sharing our technology, we can create better technology with greater input from the very best minds in our business. So we license Parasolid under a level playing field policy which means that all of our licensees get to use exactly the same technology as the Siemens products. That means the same software at the same time with the same support. And our pricing model is uh, designed to encourage people to join us. So the majority of fees that our licensees will pay will be royalties from revenue they have already generated from selling Parasolid-based applications and there is no large initial fee that forms a barrier to entry. So whether you're a startup or already a market leader, we feel that the Parasolid business has a model to match your needs. We also believe strongly in open data in that our customers and their end users should always be able to make best use of their data. And the net effect of this is that we have more people using Parasolid and contributing to its um, development and its requirements, which we feel is a benefit to the whole community. So at the moment, we have just over 130 independent software vendors who license Parasolid in the CAD, CAM, CAE, and AEC markets. And they currently have approximately 350 commercial applications for sale. Every day, over 4 million engineers sit down to a seat of Parasolid-based application to do complex modeling. Um, and we have many more millions of end users who are using Parasolid applications in lighter modeling use or in occasional use or solely for interoperability. And this community has grown steadily over the years and continues to grow organically. And there are also new opportunities as technologies overlap for further growth. For instance, currently, um, Medical scanning means there's an increasing overlap between engineering and medical technology. So although we have a very strong presence um, in the market, I would like you to think that we're sitting back and uh, resting on our laurels. So this is just one example of the innovations we're working on at the moment. For a few years now, our customers have been telling us that they would like to use facet data within Parasolid. Um, 
And this is because they're seeing more and more facet data in everyday engineering workflows. So a couple of years ago, Parasolid took on the, the challenge of combine, effectively combining um, the benefits of a BREF modeler with the benefits of a facet modeler. And we call this convergent modeling. And so in the end state, our users will be able to model um, with, with Parasolid operations on data that contains both BREP and facet BREP data in whatever, whatever combination suits their purpose at the time. And we're doing this by defining a new surface type, which is, fesh, uh, which is, which is facet mesh. Um, and that will be fully integrated to all our algorithms and all, all data structures. And so at the moment, if you have in, in Parasolid, you can have a model which is 100% faceted. And you can already use the vast majority of Parasolid operations on that. But the end state is that you'll be able to have an arbitrary mix. Um, one thing I'd like to reassure you about is that we're still fully committed to classic BREF modeling and that the work on convergent modeling is being done by adding resource to Parasolid. So if it isn't of interest just at the moment, you'll still see a constant stream of enhancements to classic BREF modeling. So let's look at a few examples of Parasolid's presence in the engineering world. Of the seven large commercial jet engine manufacturers, six of them have standardized entirely on parasolid-based applications, and the seventh uses parasolid for roughly 50% of their design, test, and manufacturing. So if you're flying on any one of these airline types, you can be assured that the engine on the wing is a wholly or substantially designed with parasolid. And the next time you're checking your flight to see where it is, you might want to look at other flights and see if you can find one with engines that aren't designed in parasolid. Likewise, in automotive, a lot of uh, large OEMs and tier one suppliers are standardized on parasolid-based applications. So typically in a large manufacturer such as Daimler or Fiat Chrysler, they'll be using Siemens NX as their primary high-end CAD system. But within numerous workflows, they might well be using 20 or 30 different parasolid-based applications from a whole range of different vendors in the knowledge that they can exchange data seamlessly between those applications based on Parasolid XT. And likewise, in consumer products, um, a number of very large premium brands are standardized on parallel parasolid-based applications. So in real life, you're, re you're rarely more than just a few meters away from a parasolid-designed object. So I'd like to say a little bit more about our attitude to open data. Um, right from day one, we've always promised our, our customers that data will be upward compatible between parasolid releases, because we never want to face the situation where we have to tell our customers that their data is toast and worthless. Um, that simply isn't our business model. And since 2005, we've also promised downward data compatibility. And this was to facilitate mix and match of parasoid-based applications from different vendors in large organizations by being sure that you can, <clears throat> you can pass back the latest parasolid model um, to a, an application that uses parasolid from two, maybe three years ago, means that um, organizations can totally forget about this compatibility issue. Also to reassure our customers, back in 98, we published the Parasolid data format so that they could be assured that if Parasolid didn't exist anymore for whatever reason, their data would still be useful to load into different applications. And in 2012, JT Open became an ISO standard, and JT Open includes the Parasolid XT file format. And in the graphic there, you'll see a few examples of large organizations that are saving millions and millions of parts in XT file format. And some of these customers are actually generating the parts in different CAD systems that are not based on Parasolid, but are choosing them to store them in XT because of our attitude to data openness. And to facilitate further data transfer from non-Parasolid systems, we also have our own toolkits. Um, 
for standards and some of the major proprietary systems. So our general <coughs> philosophy with our product is to work openly with as many people as we can, as many experts to gather requirements, to take up challenges, and to build relationships. And the graphic here shows some of the people who are members of the JT Open organization with whom we work. And I'll highlight just a few here who are not Parasolic customers and they're not uh, Siemens customers, but they're working with us on the JT Open initiative. So let's talk now a little bit, bit about data translation. Um, as I hope I've explained, the most common and easiest way of exchanging geometry data in any organization is to use the Parasolid XT file. And in fact, some of our large competitors, such as Autodesk and PTC, also license Parasolid for that purpose. So most applications can actually import and export Parasolid XT files. But quite often, end users don't want to work at the XT level. They want to work at the, at the application file level, which may or may not have XT embedded in it. Um, and that application file will typically contain PMI data or metadata that isn't in the XT data. Um, there may be upward and downward compatibil compatibility issues between versions of the application, and sometimes the data is also encrypted. So addressing this issue is really outside our area of expertise, and so that's why we are working with uh, TechSoft on this with their Hoops Exchange product. We're also seeing increasing interest in non-traditional um, PLM file formats as people are using more and more facet data, uh, more and more scan data, um, and want to do virtual reality much more. So with that, I'll hand over to the next speaker. OK, uh, thanks very much, uh, Peter. Um, what we're going to do now is transfer the host uh, 4,500 miles away and pass control over to Jonathan Giroir. So if you'll just uh, give me a moment to do this. Hey, thanks, Peter. Can you guys hear me? This is Jonathan calling in for uh, TechSoft 3D. Yes, we hear you. Thanks. Excellent. Let me, um, <clears throat> let me share my screen here and double check on that. Let me know when you see that. We can see it. Excellent. Well, thanks so much for having uh, TechSoft be part of this today. Uh, we really are uh, enjoying the relationship we have with Siemens. We've been working uh, with them for many years on, on numerous uh, different engagements and projects, but uh, this partnership when it comes to bringing uh, exchange, uh, hoops exchange and data access uh, to the Parasolid community is, has really been something that uh, we feel is, has been a, a strong partnership and has, has uh, really fueled innovation here at, at TechSoft. And that's really what we're driven to do is to fuel innovation with, with unmatched 3D technology with all of our partners, uh, not just uh, partnering with Siemens, but great partners like DP Technology. Uh, that's been something really exciting to see them take some of the newest features of Hoops Exchange and bring it uh, into their product. You, you saw Yvonne showing you that feature tree information. All of that was, was something that uh, we worked with, with Siemens on and, and some new features here uh, within Hoops Exchange. And to see that come to life is, really does excite us. Uh, so just a little bit about uh, what Hoops Exchange is to dig in a bit more. It is a data access or data translation toolkit, depending on how you want to look at it. A lot of people uh, do want to talk about data translation, but what we're, what we're focusing on is getting high-quality data from all of the different CAD file formats out there uh, into your application, particularly into the, the Parasolid modeling kernel. Uh, we like to talk about it as being data access, though, as opposed to translation. Really, a core philosophy uh, of Hoops Exchange here at TechSoft is to give you native access as close to the original data as possible, and in most cases, the actual original data. That means we're not translating into a uh, different file format when, when we don't have to. So a good example of that, all of these parasolid uh, 
based file formats out there uh, because, as, as uh, was just discussed by Peter, uh, there's so much parasolid data out there. It could be in the form of an XT file, in the form of uh, a SolidWorks or, or a NX or Solid Edge uh, file format. The core of all of that data is XT data, uh, parasolid data, and we bring that natively uh, out of the file and into the parasolid session without touching that data or transferring it to a, to a different file format. Uh, and that's very efficient, uh, both in terms of speed and quality. We also give you as, as close to the original data um, when it comes to other formats, like CATIA, that might not fit within that, that parasolid paradigm, um, but we do try to give you access to the original BREP uh, when, uh, when you do ask for that data from Exchange. And then through our bridge, we, we will then bring it into uh, to parasolid. Uh, a real focus of that is being able to reuse your data. So the, the higher quality data that we give you, uh, the, the more um, verbose and rich data that we give you, the better you can use it. So we're not just providing access to the BREP or the mesh data or the assembly structure, but everything else that comes with that. So that could be uh, all of your product manufacturing information and your GDNT, uh, as well as all of your metadata or persistent IDs. So we try to give you all of, the, all of that within one ATI um, and access to all the different file formats. Um, and to, to look at that, we try to give you as much data as possible from all of these, these native and standard CAD file formats. So be it data coming out of those parasolid base formats from Siemens or standards that we all have to deal with like uh, STEP and IGIS. Uh, as well as supporting data from um, the Dassault set of products like SOLIDWORKS, CATIA, uh, PROE, and, and the Autodesk file formats. We give you one API uh, that accesses all of that data, and we bring it into your application for reuse. Now, we do do data translation, so there are a number of file formats that we write to. So you can bring in data from one format and write to another. Um, all of the file standards, file format standards, um, as, as well as a few select other, other ones, particularly within the Siemens, um, within the, the, the Siemens product family. We can write out JT with, with PMI, but for archival, we can write out these 3D PDFs uh, that have PMI data embedded in it or the STEP AP242 file format. That also has um, rich PMI embedded in it for, for archival or downstream consumption. So one of the focuses in, that really was brought out well uh, from Yvonne's presentation is the quality of data, the speed at which the data comes in, um, as, as well as the success rate of the data coming from uh, the original CAD file into Hoops Exchange and into your application. And so they did a very uh, lengthy set of, of benchmark tests. We try to do that regularly as well. Um, there are other file formats. Um, translator SDKs out there on the market. When compared against them, um, we will have better uh, speed when it comes to bringing your data in and the quality of the data as well um, is, is normally um, much better, especially when you start looking at things, for instance, in this example, like color and PMI. And so here we have a CAD file that, that we've brought in and the PMI uh, is missing in some of the, the other file translation uh, toolkits out there, as well as color information isn't, isn't brought in either. And this, this was for a, a Creo file. We also see a real advantage when it comes to speed, too. And so in, in addition to bringing in more accurate data, many times our file access and, and providing that data to you can be several times faster than using other tools on the market. Uh, the last thing that we really try to focus on is being able to reuse this data in, in numerous scenarios as well. So it might, you might be developing a desktop application, but what's your, your plan for, for mobile architectures? Or what if you wanted to port your application to another operating system? And so we also, with the Hoops Exchange kernel, support the largest number of, um, of operating systems out there from Windows to Android to iOS to Mac, um, and with, with other solutions for, for the web, 
um, and, and browser um, viewing as well. So what do you get? What's, what's the data that you get when you bring data in through Hoops Exchange? Well, of course, we need to give you access to the native BREP in whatever form um, it exists in the CAD file format. But we also are able to extract maybe the pre-cached mesh data that exists for, for viewing. Or, as Peter was mentioning, that mesh data many times is, is quite useful for these additive workflows. And so sometimes you have data that's coming in, let's say, from an STL file. Uh, it has no BREP and you want to use it in this convergent um, BREP type scenario, maybe for additive manufacturing, uh, 3D printing. Uh, all that mesh data can come in through Hoops Exchange, and we can provide that uh, to the Parasolid kernel. Additionally, we can mesh your data, but obviously Parasolid has fantastic tools for that as well. All of your model tree information, so that could be uh, not just your, your parts and your assembly structure, but um, maybe your uh, family tables and configurations, so all of that higher level type management of, of your assembly tree and the model trees is something that we can bring in. PMI is, is something that we see being used uh, a lot more, especially <clears throat> in these industries like the like aerospace and automotive um, that Parasol is, <clears throat> excuse me, is dominant in. That rich PMI access is also absolutely critical, and being able to organize that PMI in PMI views and be able to, to view them, step through them, we'll show that to you in a demo. And then also we have uh, released a beta version of, of features that DP technology is using to, to extract your feature tree as well as your, your whole pattern and whole definitions. That's getting hardened in our 2018 release that is um, due out imminently. I believe we're, we're posting that later today or, or um, this week. So that's uh, a real exciting set of, of data that comes out of your CAD file that allows for reuse. Also, just like JT is an open standard, Hoops Exchange does provide a set of data that can be written out, particularly in, into a, a, a format called PRC, which is standardized within the PDF-E uh, file format standards, an ISO standard. So all of this data can be pushed into an, an ISO standard data format for archival um, that is, is open and, and accessible to, to people as we continue to, to work on that. But what, what about this, this um, integration between Hoops Exchange, bringing that data from, from the file into your Parasolid-based application? So, in addition to just having Hoops Exchange and having <clears throat> just Parasolid, there is a uh, quite extensive piece of technology that our engineering team has worked with this Siemens support team to develop, and that's this Parasolid bridge. And, and that allows bringing in assembly data, BREP data, and, and attribute data into your Parasolid session. And we feel that through a, numerous, it's been about a two-year project and continue to improve on that, that we have the very best data coming from CAD files going into uh, your, your Parasolid modeling kernel. So uh, both when it comes to the quality of the data, the speed of which it's coming in, uh, the success rate of, of being able to do that, we feel like we're able to write the very best XT data into your, into your session. Um, and that is further improved by um, including body shop. And again, Yvonne mentioned not all data coming from different file formats is created equally, and there's, there's problematic data out there. And so in addition to having some very basic sewing um, <clears throat> and data cleanup as part of the Parasolid bridge, you can couple this with Parasolid body shop to ensure the very best quality data to come into your Parasolid session. And what are some key features of this, this Parasolid bridge? Well, for any of those CAD file formats that are XT-based, so that would be XT, but also NX, Solid Edge, and SolidWorks, no translation of the source data is, is done. So it's brought right through, the, right through the bridge. It's done very quickly and efficiently. For all other file formats, let's say CATIA will show a demo of that. That data is mapped into the Parasolid kernel using the Parasolid APIs 
And all of this is done, this parasolid bridge integration within your application, literally with one line of code. And you, you call the, the load function and it brings all that data into your parasolid session. But additionally, we provide access to data outside of, of um, that core BREP assembly and attributes. So things like PMI and views and mesh data, that also is something that we can bring into your session and, and be able to utilize <clears throat> within your application. So we do do a, a fair amount of um, work to ensure the quality of your data um, coming into the Parasolid session is, is of high quality. So this was done through using Hoops Exchange and Parasolid, or as mentioned, using Body Shop to continue to heal that problematic data. Uh, some of the things that we do, we have worked on and, and are able to solve with, within that would be fixing um, topological in, inconsistencies, stitching surfaces, like you have um, IGES files that have um, disconnected surfaces, tightening gaps, um, really allowing you to create a number of, of different things uh, bring that data in to high quality. And the, the importance of that is, is data reuse, is we want to get the highest quality data into your kernel so that you can reuse it with minimal amount of work. So what else are, are we looking at? Like I mentioned, 2018, our 2018 release is just about to come out, and that, that has um, now released support, official support for NX, CATIA, and CREO feature support, feature trees, um, whole, whole definitions and patterns. Whenever we do a, a release, we up, update our translators to the latest versions of all the CAD file formats out there. So that includes support now for Inventor 2018, SOLIDWORKS 2018, um, CATIA, uh, our uh, 2017, um, and we try to do that. We have not just a, an official release towards the end of the year every year, but we have service pack releases uh, at least twice a year with, with patch releases in between. We're able to get in um, updates to all those final formats within those, those releases. The integration with Parasolid continues to be enhanced, so uh, we're trying to support their, their faceted modeling, um, uh, the convergent modeling with facet data. So there's been some improvements to the, the bridge there to allow that. And then also support for, for 2D and, and 3D DWG data. There's a tremendous amount of um, AutoCAD DWG data out there. We're able to give you access to, to the 2D. Uh, that really doesn't play well in, in Parasolid, but you can't have access to that in, in exchange. By, by play well, I mean Parasolid is a 3D modeling kernel. You can bring in some data, but what you would really be most interested in working on would be your, your 3D. And so that um, we see a lot of data coming in, uh, 3D DWG data coming into your, your Parasolid uh, kernel through the bridge through, through Hoops Exchange. So let's, let's take a look at a demo. And this is a application that's been built using Hoops Exchange, uh, Hoops Visualize for, for viewing data, and then also um, Parasolid for doing some modeling operations and, and interrogation uh, and a number of other things. So here I'm loading in. Uh, an NX file, and uh, it's loaded using Hoops Exchange. The visualization engine is, is Hoops Visualize, and then it's also loaded into that Parasolid kernel. And we're able to show you we give access to the native data. So here I click on a surface. It gives you the surface type. Here's all the surface um, properties that uh, exist in that XT data in the NX file. Um, so here this is a, this is a cone. I can, I can select the edges, and that, that shows me uh, other the parasolid uh, ID of that particular um, piece of, of uh, CAD geometry, and I, I can continue doing that throughout my file. Well, let's, let's look at something a little bit different. Let's look at some, some modeling. So uh, to, to show that, let's, let's now open not a XT-based file, but here a, uh, a CATIA file. And we map that into the, the Parasolid session. And if I want to, I can select on an edge. It shows me here's my, my Parasolid ID, and I can, I can blend that edge. So this is calling native Parasolid um, APIs to, to do modeling on that particular data. But it, additionally, we also have information on each vertex, edge, face, part, subassembly, unique uh, identifiers on each of those that allows us to track this data as it moves through uh, your application. 
uh, let's say your application uh, has, you have to do um, maybe add some notes to it or add a draft angle or mold uh, or add some constraints for analysis. Uh, that's a lot of work that is being done within your application uh, that you don't want to have to redo. But if an engineering change order gets issued um, and you have a new part with new features, you don't want to have to redo all of that, that work. And using persistent IDs, we're able to track what happens within your data and apply, um, allow you to apply changes that you've made if the part is updated. So, so here's an example. Um, again, we, we made a blend on that edge. But here now I can load a, a second part or reload that file with a part that um, <laughs> apparently crashes my application, which is, which is real when it comes to, to demo. So let's, let's try that again. So this isn't production level code. I'm, I'm a developer and I, I do uh, software development. And let's try that one more time in our demo. So we apply, apply that particular um, blend and we reload using a different, different part. Um, now this part has a hole in it. Notice the hole is there, uh, but also all of what I've done in that parasolid session has been applied because we know the unique ID of that particular edge or, or face or part and we've applied, we've applied this blend and allows me to, to very quickly reuse data even if it's changing. So I can move up and down the product life cycle being able to, uh, to apply different, different changes. Okay, the last thing is uh, let's, let's take a look at some other data here. We have some CATIA data. I'm going to load that into our, our parasolid session. And um, this particular piece of this CATIA part has some uh, PMI attached to it. So we have a, a number of, of different views. And I'm actually going to change, let's, let's change that up just a little bit. I'm going to open this here. Yeah, let's do this. Make sure that we use the right font. And so in addition to mapping each piece of BREP into the Parasol session, we're also able to connect that data um, with the product manufacturing information. Now it's, it's a complicated part, has a lot of PMI in there. Additionally, in CATIA, we have all the PMI views. So I'm going to select just one individual view, which allows me to isolate just some information um, that was originally authored in that CATIA file. Uh, and then if I want to, I can actually click on a piece of PMI, and it shows me exactly what geometry that, that's being attached to. And so here, this, this piece of PMI shows you that this, this is attached to this, um, this geometry. And so even if we don't have that PMI in the Parasol session itself, we're able to give you access to that within, within your application and connect it to your Parasol session. So that's all I have. Uh, I'm happy to turn back um, the session to, to, to Jonathan and um, happy also to answer any questions that you may have. Okay, uh, thanks uh, very much for a very informative uh, presentation there, Jonathan. There are, in fact, uh, a couple of questions in. Um, I think these are probably directed at you. So we have first question, any plans to support X3D read-write given that it succeeds Vermal? Good, good question. Um, I most likely would have to get back to you on that one, but we really do focus on on file formats that um, contain VREP data. Though STL is, is of great interest to us, particularly it's useful in the additive space. Um, VRML is something we, we've legacy supported as a legacy format. Um, and there are no, I just got a text from, from my product manager, there's no um, imminent plans for X3D read and write. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Jonathan. And the second question from the same person. This is Kamara Govindan. Um, if you re-import the CATIA file, will you get the same Parasolid ID for the different edges? 
yes, you will. And that's it's exactly what we're doing there is we, we recognize that this, this unique ID, which is, which is different than the parasolid ID, I guess that, that we need some clarification on that, that question. So the unique ID is something we're able to track. The parasolid ID is something that is unique to the session, the parasolid session. And so if we re-import the parasolid ID, um, most likely will change. Okay. But we'll okay, be able thanks, to track John. it with this un unique ID. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thanks, uh, Jonathan. Well, uh, um, attendees will have your co contact details if they need to follow up uh, later on. Um, okay. Um, I do have another question here. I think this is probably aimed at uh, Jonathan and uh, Peter. It's from John. And the question is, is there a training course for developers to learn how to use the toolkit? So I can... Uh, this is Jonathan from TechSoft. I can uh, at least talk to Exchange. So yes, absolutely. Part of our engagement with you is a, a 30 day free evaluation where you get paired with a consulting engineer who's a software developer. Our engineers work, work, work with your engineers to integrate the, the kernel into your application, the Hoops Exchange. Um, Additionally, and which we highly recommend, we have numerous training courses around the world at our different offices that we conduct on a regular basis on the API specifically. Um, or we can also come to your site uh, and do a custom training program with, with our uh, consulting team. And for Parasolid, um, we also offer a 90-day free evaluation, which includes full software, um, support resources and customer support. Um, we generally find that with the tools we provide, um, experienced developers can get up and going really very quickly. And so although we offer a training course, um, the majority of our evaluators and um, customers don't actually use that there. We have extensive documentation and they generally find that uh, very useful in getting going quickly. Okay, thanks, uh, Peter and uh, Jonathan, for those answers. We have a couple more minutes. If anyone else has any further questions, uh, do do get in touch. Um, okay, I see one. I see one here. Um, in Parasolid-based formats, is there a persistent and unique instance ID which is different for different instances of the same part, and which remains the same when the part is modified? Is there a way to obtain this ID using the Hoops Exchange API? So that the panelists should be able excellent, to... <laughs> excellent question. Um, I might I might have to think about that for a little bit and get back to to Sergey. Okay. I for Parasite, I can answer the first part is that there are persistent IDs um, stored in the XT file. So I'm pretty certain that Hoops will be able to access those because they're not translating the XT data at all when they're moving XT between Parasolid-enabled um, applications. Okay, yeah, and we Peter. will generally expose any persistent IDs that are associated with, with any topological item. So as the part is modified, that would that would be a, a good question. I think we'd have to dig a bit deeper into his exact workflow, and we'd be happy to do that with you. Okay, um, and we have uh, one more question here uh, from Anatoly. Um, do you support reading ideas, that's .unv files, with FEA mesh and material properties inside? Yeah, another another good question. Um, I'd I'd have to look exactly at at the spec on on how much additional data that we support in in ideas. Okay. From uh, my knowledge, with Parasolid, um, ideas and unigraphics were merged into the NX product, and so I believe NX would read the ideas. Um, data and then Hoops will be able to read it from through their NX filter. Okay. 
Okay. Uh, thanks, Peter. Well, we can get back uh, to, to to these uh, people asking questions offline. Um, as I'm not seeing any further questions, uh, let's just double check. Um, Okay, now one more question, time for one more question. Um, this is from Ludovic. Um, what about the export or import of 3MF, a 3D manufacturing format that seems uh, the successor to STL? Yeah, so we do support that and we, um, let me bring my slide back up here. This is my reference. So we, we support it in writing and, and not in reading because it tends to be a, a destination format that you, you push out to. But it is something that we're, we're working on. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Jonathan. Yeah. And so, okay. That's, we're so approaching that's just to, just to be, to follow up on that. So export is, is existent right now and the import is, um, is on our roadmap. Um, so we will be supporting that in the near future, and, and that will be useful for bringing bringing that data into Parasolid. Okay, thanks very much, Jonathan. Yes. Okay, we've reached the end of our hour, so I would like to thank all our presenters today for giving us uh, such great insights into these products, and also all those uh, participants who joined us today and gave up their time to learn more about Parasolid and Hoops Exchange. Thanks very much. And goodbye.